New technologies are often inspired by Mother Nature, the greatest inventor of them all. What's that stuck to my dog? How do inventors invent? They must get their ideas from somewhere. What inspires them? It could be a chance encounter, improbable occurrence, or even a dream the night before. Then again, many ideas are simply staring us in the face. We just need to stop and look. In fact, lots of ideas, which we might end up patenting one day, already exist. Where, we hear you ask. Where you live, where you walk, where you are. Just stop and look around you, at nature. So many inventions and technologies were quite simply inspired by Mother Nature, indisputably the greatest inventor of all. Nature is full of examples which can inspire inventors to come up with more efficient industrial processes. Solutions for noise, technological innovations, you name it. Nature can even help us lower the greenhouse gas emissions humans have been pumping into the atmosphere, harming nature itself. See the irony? Nature even teaches us how to stop hurting it. Taking ideas from nature to develop technology is known as biomimicry, or otherwise said, mimicking biology. For instance, one of the natural phenomena that has become of great interest to computer programmers and engineers is something called swarm logic. Swarm logic is based on the study of social insects, such as honeybees and ants, which evolved by following simple rules at an individual level that can be converted into complex behavior at a group level to the benefit of their society as a whole. One example of a technology inspired by bees is N-Cycle, a system which uses feedback from thermostats to alter the general heating, ventilation and air conditioning HVAC systems in buildings. It works in the same way that honeybees communicate and coordinate with each other, using simple rules governing individual interactions to build their hives and keep their colony fed. Encycle uses swarm logic to synchronize power-hungry HVAC rooftop units on a real-time basis, so that instead of operating in isolation, the units become part of an Internet of Things-based closed-loop system that coordinates their activity, apportioning energy consumption more logically among them. This approach lowers electricity costs, maximizes energy efficiency and reduces environmental impact while maintaining comfort in the building. This is important in a wider sense, since buildings are one of the top five emitters of greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Anything we can do to reduce emissions from buildings will have a positive effect on the environment, as well as saving on energy bills. So, swarm logic is of great interest to power operators in general. Now that more and more smart meters have been installed in industry, businesses and homes, the capacity for feeding information back to the central grid is enormous. Large, centralized power stations may become a thing of the past, as feedback about usage and pricing drive the development of distributed and diverse energy systems based on smaller producers using renewable energy generators and storage systems. And the effect swarm logic could have on other applications is not lost on engineers across the technology spectrum. By just adding a little bit more intelligence to Wi-Fi products, networks in the 5G era will become self-organizing, adjusting small cell coverage to keep data rates high in dense usage environments, such as cities like New York, Beijing or London, or even your own home. Let's take a look at another amazing example in biomimicry. George de Mestrel was out walking his dog, a sprightly pointer in the woods by Lake Geneva, when he saw that the dog's fur was covered with the seeds of the burdock plant. Curious to know how burrs from the plant had stuck to the dog and his own clothing, when he got home, George put them under a microscope and looked closely at the hook system the seeds used to hitchhike on passing animals for dispersing. George realized that the burdock's gripping device was more reliable than zips, 
which frequently jammed, and that the same approach could be used to join other things together. After years of investigating the burr's properties, George translated its fixing and fastening functions into textiles, creating what we now know as the hook and loop. He named his revolutionary invention by amalgamating the French words velour, velvet, and crochet, hook, hence creating the brands known as Velcro. Today, there are tens of thousands of Velcro products in anything from clothing and shoes to blood pressure armbands and artificial turf for football pitches. Even the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong's spacesuit, was stuck together with Velcro, all based on a technology inspired by nature, the burdock burr's sticking properties. Another brilliant inventor to take his lead from nature was the Japanese engineer, Eiji Nakatsu, who also happened to be a bird watcher. Dr. Nakatsu was Director of Technical Development at JR West, the company that created the bullet train that is the foundation of the Japanese railway system, used to transport about 64 million people every day. Dr. Nakatsu and his team were testing the design of the train in the early 1990s. The aim was to allow passengers to travel from Shin Osaka to Hakata in about 2 hours and 20 minutes which would require speeds of 350 kilometers per hour. But in the early stages, such a fast train created a lot of noise, vibration and pressure waves, especially as it raced through tunnels. It caused a loud booming sound as it left the tunnel due to a cushion of air that built up in front of the train at high speed. The noise woke people up at night and frightened wildlife. Sat on a riverbank one day, Dr. Nakatsu watched a kingfisher diving down through the air and into the water. It intrigued Dr. Nakatsu how the bird created so little splash or noise. I wonder if I could apply this principle to the shape of the front of the bullet train. So he had his team model the front of the train on the kingfisher's beak. And sure enough, when they tested the new model, it moved through tunnels without creating a boom. The new design also saved 10 to 15% on energy because it was more aerodynamic. This wasn't the only idea from the animal world that Dr. Nakatsu and his team used to quieten the train. The pantograph, the component that connects the train to its power source, was also vibrating and making a loud noise. Now, an owl has many feathers to absorb its fluttering sounds and its primary feathers have jagged edges to minimize the vortex generated by movement, all useful for silent hunting at night. So the train's pantograph was reshaped like an owl's wing, including small serrations, which resulted in no vibrations and, again, quieter impact for people living near the tracks. The supporting frame for the pantograph also had a high degree of wind resistance that resulted in aerodynamic noise. Studying the Adderley penguin, whose body is shaped like a spindle to allow it to move effortlessly through water to catch fish, they redesigned the pantograph's supporting shaft like a penguin's body to lower its wind resistance. Every year, thousands of Japanese die in car accidents. The Shinkansen bullet train is estimated to have saved around 1,800 lives per year by replacing personal travel with mass transit. Railway travel also produces the lowest amount of greenhouse gases per passenger compared to travel by automobile, airplane or bus. Here we are again, Mother Nature showing humans how to save themselves and the planet with ideas of her own.